With four parameters, I can fit an elephant, and with five, I can make him wiggle his trunk. This remark by John von Neumann beautifully captures the essence of a serious problem in both physics and machine learning, overfitting. It illustrates how, if we give a model too many free parameters, it can mimic almost any data set, even something as absurd as the outline of an elephant. But of course, a model that can do this is not necessarily a good model. In fact, it's usually a terrible one. Overfitting happens when a model is so flexible, so unconstrained, that it adapts too closely to the quirks of the training data, losing its ability to generalize. And this problem is not unique to machine learning. Physicists, too, wrestle with models' free parameters all the time. Every scientific model, whether in physics or machine learning, comes with unknown parameters that must be determined by data. Consider the mass of the Higgs boson. It wasn't derived purely from theoretical equations, but measured through painstaking analysis of data from the ATLAS and CMS detectors at CERN's Large Hadron Collider, with the discovery announced in 2012. In machine learning, we do something very similar. We fit models to data by minimizing error, often called the loss function, to find the best parameter values. This minimization process is really just a numerical replacement for analytically solving a system of equations. If you think about it, every independent row of a data set can be seen as one equation in such a system. Mathematically, to solve for all free parameters, we need at least as many independent equations as parameters. In practice, that means the number of rows in a data set puts a ceiling on the number of parameters we can reliably determine. More data, more freedom. Less data, fewer parameters. This is not exact, but it captures the core intuition. The amount of data dictates the maximum complexity our model can safely have. And complexity is directly tied to the number of free parameters. The more parameters we allow, the more flexible the model becomes. But flexibility comes with a cost. When the number of free parameters exceeds what the dataset can support, the model memorizes the training data. It fits it too perfectly. And while it looks impressive on the training set, its performance collapses on new, unseen data. That's overfitting. On the other end of the spectrum, if we restrict the number of parameters too much, the model fails to even capture the training data. That's underfitting. So the tension is clear. Too many parameters? Overfit. Too few? Underfit. The sweet spot lies in allowing as many free parameters as the dataset size reasonably supports. No more, no less. The real goal of machine learning is generalization, to build models that perform well on unseen data. That's where regularization comes in. Regularization prevents the model from growing unwieldy and ensures it learns patterns that truly matter. Surprisingly, regularization is just another name for what physicists know as the Lagrange multiplier method. We will get into this later in this video. If you are interested, stay tuned. Now let's connect this struggle to the probabilistic foundation of machine learning. In earlier episodes, we discussed that machine learning models are governed by probability distributions. Since the true distribution is unknown, we approximate it. For example, using intuition from physics, we argued that the probability of static data is often close to a multivariate Gaussian distribution. When the data set is large, we can use the data directly to determine the parameters of this distribution with high certainty. But when the data set is small, we cannot pin down all parameters precisely. Instead, we assign them their own probability distributions. This changes the picture. Our overall probability is no longer just the probability of the data, but the product of this with the probability distribution that we assume for the parameters themselves. Common choices for the parameter vector, which we show using the beta symbol, are 1. The Gaussian distribution, and 2. The Laplace distribution. When we multiply these distributions into our model probability, we get modified total probabilities that look like one of the following two. Now, recall from episodes 2 and 3. The learning process is about minimizing the difference between our model distribution and the true distribution. Mathematically, this means minimizing the following equation, which after expanding gives us 
The first two terms form the conventional loss function, which we denote as curly L. The last term is new. It acts as a penalty term, arising naturally from assigning probability distributions to the parameters. That's the key insight. Regularization is simply the introduction of probability distributions on the parameters. Thus, if we assume a Gaussian distribution for the parameters of our machine learning model, our loss function to be minimized receives the following correction. And for Laplace distribution of the parameters, we minimize the following where J indexes the components of the parameter vector beta. Now let's zoom out. In physics, we often derive equations of motion by minimizing the action potential. When constraints are present, we add them to the action using Lagrange multipliers. This is exactly what we're doing in machine learning. To find the optimal values of the free parameters of our models, we minimize the loss function, subject to a penalty term that constrains the parameters. When the probability of the parameters is assumed to be Gaussian, parameters are constrained to lie within a sphere in parameter space. In machine learning, this is referred to as the L2 regularization. When this constraint is added to a linear regression, we refer to it as the ridge regression. On the other hand, when the probability of the parameters is assumed to be Laplace, parameters are constrained to a plane or diamond-like region in parameter space. In machine learning, this is referred to as the L1 regularization. When this constraint is added to a linear regression, we refer to it as the lasso regression. So the penalty term in machine learning is nothing exotic. It's the Lagrange multiplier we already know from physics. Now let's examine the effects of these penalties or constraints on the parameters of the models. In ridge regression or under the L2 regularization, the penalty is, this shrinks some coefficients towards zero but never eliminates them. It's especially effective when the columns of the data set are correlated, making it great for tackling multicollinearity. In lasso regression or under L1 regularization, the penalty is here, the effect is stronger. Some coefficients are driven exactly to zero, creating sparsity. Lasso not only regularizes, but also performs feature selection, making it ideal for high-dimensional datasets where only a few features matter. We can also combine the two penalty terms to make what we refer to as the elastic net. Here, the penalty is a combination of both L1 and L2 terms. This method balances the strengths of ridge and lasso. It can select groups of correlated variables together while also promoting sparsity. The trade-off. You must tune two hyperparameters, lambda 1 and lambda 2. But when datasets are high-dimensional and features are correlated, elastic net is often the most robust choice. So let's tie this all together. Overfitting is the problem of too many parameters chasing too little data. Regularization is the solution, born directly from assigning probability distributions to parameters. The penalties we add are the familiar Lagrange multipliers from physics. And the methods, ridge, lasso, and elastic net, are simply different ways of constraining parameter space. In future videos, we will discuss how to practically find the so-called hyperparameters of the models, or in other words, the Lagrange multipliers lambda, directly from data.